It's tool time, so here we go. All right, so uh, I'm going to show you today um, a new tool that I'm going to give a shot at. And uh, if you ever do too many tires, you'll notice that sometimes you come into this sort of predicament where there's a large gap between the bead on your tire and the rim. And, you know, if you lift it up, the gap just goes underneath. Uh, but, you know, there's only so many ways you can get this to seat. So you have to add a lot of air really fast. Uh, the pedal on your tire machine, um, it'll blast air in from the bottom. But in a situation like this, it's a lot of times not enough. So in the past, you know, you'll have to use what they refer to as a bead blaster. So if you take a look over here. This is uh, a bead blaster I've been using for a year or two, and it works all right. Um, generally, what you'll do is you'll fill it with air uh, right here through the air chuck. And then this is just a simple valve. It's a little stiff, but you'll put the nozzle sort of right here, uh, point the air down in there, and then when you push the nozzle forward, all the air in the whole tank, uh, it's a five gallon tank, will come out all at once. And it'll fill the inside of the cavity uh, of the tire with air, causing it to inflate onto the bead. So if you do that, um, you know, it generally, uh, it will inflate your tire. Um, at the same time, you normally want to add air in your valve stem. And whenever you do this, you'll take out the valve core first. So we'll put that on there. Um, and today, though, what I want to show you is a new bead blaster tool that I bought. And this is a different style blaster tool. So you can see this one um, is sort of horizontal. This one here is referred to more as like a bazooka or a cannon style because it's got a handle right here that you can hold and you still fill it with air right there. And rather than any lever, there's just a push button right here that you can push to release the air. Uh, so we're going to try to use that on this occasion uh, because I just got this. I want to try it out. Uh, we're going to see if it works as good as this one. Uh, and if it's, uh, you know, if it's something that uh, you should think about buying if you do tires. So when you're dealing with the tire that has this kind of gap, and it's going to be really tough to seat the bead up in here, um, the bead blaster is generally not enough. The air comes from the bottom when you step on the blaster pedal, uh, and you try to hold it up to give a little air to come in the bottom. But you can see when I do that, the tire doesn't even bulge out and try to inflate because there's just too much space in there. So we need more air volume to get, to get it to go. Um, the first thing I like to do in that kind of situation is make sure that the tire isn't sitting all the way down on the bottom bead because, you know, all the gap is here. I want some of the air to come up through the bottom where the bead blaster works. So generally I'll take something like some 2x4s and I'll put it underneath. You can see that my valve core, uh, the valve stem, isn't even close to touching here. So I like to try to get it up close to where the, the valve stem is also going to put air in. So I'll get air from three ways, from the bottom, and the valve stem, and the bead blaster uh, tank. So I'll generally lift up on this and wedge a piece of 2x4 underneath there. That way I kind of close the gap where my valve stem is. So hopefully you can see I've just wedged a 2x4 under here and now I've sort of closed the gap where that valve stem is. Next thing I like to do is do the same thing on the other side. Like this because now there's still a giant gap over here. So I'm going to come across here, wedge another piece in there. So now I've got a lot of this gap closed. Uh, now you can see, you know, it's within an inch, and it's going to seat a lot easier that way. So now when I push on my, so now when I push on my pedal, uh, the air will blast up from the bottom and go inside. Now generally, when there's that much of a gap. It doesn't matter if you raise the tire that much or not. 
you're still not going to be able to seat it. There is a little bit of raising and inflation there. And keep in mind that I have the valve core out of the inside of the valve stem to allow more airflow. But it's still just not enough airflow to get this tire on there. Uh, so generally what I would do is take my tank like this and I would put it in a position like this. And then after it's full of air, I would step on the blaster pedal and push the handle down at the same time to allow maximum airflow into the tire. Well, as you can see, this thing is heavy, it's big and awkward. You have to put it up here by your chest or your shoulders when it's on the tire machine. If it's on the ground, it's a little easier to work with, but you know, when it's on the tire machine, it's way high like this, and it's awkward. You almost can't even see this lever when you're trying to push it down. Also, sometimes you'll push it down, the lever won't go all the way, and you know, it doesn't release all the air. So really, you almost have to bam, and one big swath force it forward. You know, it's just awkward. So instead of this, I'm going to give this new style a try, and this is the bazooka style, like we talked about. Um, you can see it's got a pressure gauge here to tell you how full it is, and you just fill it right here. Uh, open the after you get your air hose on, you just open it, let the air in, then you can close this off. Now, when you're ready to go, all you have to do is hold it like a gun and just pull the trigger, just like so. Uh, it's also got a nice handle you can hold up here uh, so you can get a good grip on it. So this way it's much more convenient and we can just hold it like this. And it's a lot easier to maintain when you have your finger on the trigger, a hand here and a hand here. I can also have more space to step on the pedal at the same time and not have to be way back here blind trying to use it. So that's what we're going to do. Let's fill this thing up and then we're going to give it a shot, see if the tire inflates. First thing, I'm going to take my air hose. I'll put it on there. I will say it's a little tight right in there getting your air hose on. Uh, it'd be nice if it was angled or maybe if you had a right angle fitting to put your air hose on this way. We're going to go ahead and fill it up. I'm going to get about 125 pounds of pressure in here. Now, I will say on this one, I'm not crazy about it, but uh, the pressure rating on, this, on the... Um, gauge here does not have PSI on it. It has bar. Uh, so it, it's a little hard to equate. Uh, right now it says something like uh, 7 bar. But uh, I know what my pressure on my unit set at. And I'm set here at about 110 pounds, something like that right now on my air hose. Uh, 110, 125 pounds. So now I have this tank full of air. So I was trying to get through this video kind of quick so my lubricant uh, didn't dry up in there. So let's give it a shot and we'll make this go quick. Uh, I like to wear headphones when I do this because it's pretty loud. Just gonna get this in the right spot, down at an angle. I'm gonna step on my pedal at the same time I blast it with my finger up here. Now you can see the tire's inflating. Hey, sorry about that. Camera battery died there, right as we were getting it on the rim. Uh, so, a couple notes. Uh, make sure that you take your blocks out or release the pedal with your rim clamp there. Otherwise, uh, as the tire inflates, it'll come up and it'll come off of your rim clamps. Uh, also, uh, as you're starting, after you get the bead uh, sealed onto the rim, then of course you have to put your valve stem back in. I generally do that, uh, 
I don't know, just right after the, the bead pops. Got that back on. Now I just uh, release my rim clamps and air it up to the right pressure. Anyway, uh, so you can see we got this thing uh, on the bead. Uh, and now the rest of the thing is just to get it inflated. And um, uh, when you're using one of these, uh, you can see that it's much more convenient. There's just one trigger there to push. So it did the job this time. And I don't know how well longevity wise this will hold up. Uh, but it sure is a lot more convenient than the big yellow one that I've been using for a year or two. Uh, so hopefully you like watching my videos. Uh, hopefully that helps you next time you have trouble mounting a uh, tire, getting it seated on the rim. And uh, also gives you an idea of what kind of um, bead blaster tank to use. So, uh, you know, take it or leave it. Subscribe. See you next time.